Hello, my name is Emmanuel Teichen, and I am responsible for IOX. Today, I will be talking about IOX, application hosting on Cisco IoT gateways and networks. Um, I've been at Cisco for a little more than years. I've been doing uh, TAC, CX, engineering. We may have spoken over the phone and was, uh, when I was a technical support engineer, but today I'm going to talk about Cisco IOX, which is an application hosting environment. The name IOX comes from Cisco IOS, which is the router operating system, and Linux, which is another operating system that you may already know. So because IOX can host Linux applications on Cisco gateways, we decide to give it this name, IOX. IOX can do two things, host virtual machines as well as containers. For virtual machines, we can host QCO2 or OVA on some of the platforms. And for containers, we decide to standardize on Docker toolchain because people operating data centers are already very familiar with the Docker tools. So we wanted to leverage that expertise that we use both on the data center and at the network edge. To do the um, application deployment and management, we have a number of options. One of them runs directly on the IoT gateway and it's called Cisco IOX Local Manager. That's a web UI that runs on the router itself and you will view, you will see at the end of this presentation um, and how to use it. The Cisco IoT gateways are deployed in a different kind of uh, scenario, different kind of use cases. The IoT gateways are ruggedized, DC powered, and they're made to be installed in difficult environment where a typical enterprise platform would not fit. For example, on roadways, you may see some of our gears installed in street cabinets where uh, the temperature can rise, where we do not want fans, where we want very low CPU um, heat dissipations and things like that where you also want to have an application. So if you have an application running on the roadways, on the roadside, it may detect, for example, a driver driving the wrong way and then send uh, a message or change the digital signage on top of the roadways. You want that decision to happen locally on the roadways with IOX. Uh, manufacturing, you may want to gather data, you may want to gather uh, machine data, like uh, MQTT, MT Connect, or Modbus um, locally, and also perform some sort of uh, local analysis. And the oil and gas industry, um, there's like millions of sensors and data points, and you may want to aggregate all that on an edge gateway before sending a summary of what's really important upstream. So there is a this is just three examples. There's many more of that. There's remote and mobile assets, uh, moving vehicles, etc. Um, how does that really work? So the high level, very high level architecture of IOX is on all of our platforms We do have somewhere a Linux kernel, which forms the basis of all this. And that's what we call the host OS. On top of the host OS, we are running a virtualization layer, which can either virtualize over VMs or virtualize containers uh, with Docker, right? We do have the platform virtual service manager on the left side, which orchestrates volume management and security and resource management and to make sure that what is being shared between the running containers in IOX does not jeopardize the host OS system stability. Because what we want the router to do is to route traffic. What we want to switch to do is to switch traffic. So we certainly do not want under any circumstance that an IOX application jeopardize the gateway's primary function. On top of this, we have something called CAF, Cisco Application Framework, which is the CAF app hosting. The framework gives you access to a number of different methods that you can interact with uh, to deploy start and stop applications. Uh, we have an API, we have a CLI utility called IOX client, we have a local manager, which I've talked about already, and then we have also uh, capabilities on the Cisco IOS CLI to interact with those applications. In terms of gateways, we have a number of different gateways. I'm talking just about the IoT gateways in this case. We have two routers, the IR829 and the IR1101, uh, that can be installed in ruggedized environment, do support LTE connectivity uh, for the IR869. You can also use Wi-Fi. 
In terms of switches, we have the IE4000 and the IE3400. Just remember that the IE4000 IOX support has been uh, end of life. So you can still use the switch, but you will not have IOX support on new iOS releases. If you want to have, still use IOX, you have to move to the IE3400, which is a new kit on the block, much faster, much more efficient and powered by ARM. We also have the CGR1000 specifically targeted towards um, uh, grid substation and electri electricity distribution. All those platforms can run edge compute. We also have enterprise platforms that are capable to run edge compute. So I will not go through the details on how to create an app. You can check on DevNet. But what is interesting is to know that once you have an IOX application being created, um, you can deploy that IOX application using either Cisco IOX Local Manager, which runs locally on the platform itself. So there is nothing to install or anything like that. You just enable IOX and then you can use it. IOX Client, which is a binary that you can run on Windows or Linux where, that you can use to package IOX applications, but also to integrate with your IOX gateways. And you also have Cisco GMM, the gateway management module, which is a cloud-based network management and application deployment platform, as well as Cisco FND, Field Network Director, which is an on-prem application management and network management platform. Okay, so there is a, a number of different options that you can use to deploy IOX applications locally or at scale. So let's just do a quick demo. What we're going to do here, we're going to deploy an IOX applications over a router, an IR1101 using local manager. We're going to activate, start the application, and show that you can trigger digital IO outputs from within that IOX application. So now we are logged into um, local manager. As you can see, Cisco IOX local manager. It's an IR1101. I have already uploaded the application, but just click on add new select your application, click upload, and your application uploads here on the interface. Next thing, after you upload, you need to activate the application. For example, you may want to configure the interface IP address and uh, details such as um, default, uh, default gateway, such as uh, a DNS and things like that. Then we have four digital IO ports. So now we are going to map the physical digital IO on the router, on the router, on the gateway, with the logical digital IO on the IOX application. So it's just a matter of picking DIO3 for the label DIO3, DIO4 for the label DIO4. The source code of this application is available. Um, just look at the slide content and you will see where it is. Now I'm activating the app, which means I'm reserving the resources for this application on this platform. The app is activated and now I can start it. It just takes a couple of seconds. We're just spinning the container and make it run. As you can see, the container is now running. So I know that my application runs on port 8080, so I can just go on the same URL and select 8080. As you can see, I have a web interface. This is an IOX application. This is coming from the container that runs on the router. And when I trigger outputs over here, what it does, you don't see that, but I see it. It triggers a little relay on my router and I can see that the outputs are being triggered on and off. So you can, for example, use that application to turn on or turn off a fan, a light, or an, uh, a diesel generator or anything like that. I hope this example is useful to you. Uh, the source code, as I said, is available on Code Exchange and GitHub. Feel free to give me a comment and hope you enjoy it. Thank you.